Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India In this session we will look at bioclimatic assessment and building bioclimatic charts. There are two major components that we will look at. First, I will introduce you to the basics of bioclimatic assessment, what is a bioclimatic chart and how to read that and how to create building bioclimatic charts and draw inferences for building design. And the next part, I will be taking you through a software demonstration where there will be a working on specific climate files and then how to draw inferences for building design. The first is about bioclimatic chart itself. So, it is a very interesting chart which was created. We talked a lot about comfort zone for you know regular thermal comfort in psychrometric chart plus we also talked about adaptive comfort zone. <coughs> this particular bioclimatic chart contains relative humidity in its x axis. In the y axis you have temperature, dry bulb temperature and there is a comfort zone. Of course, this zone varies from location to location. Originally, it was developed in the US. Then you have the comfort zone here. We will look at more location specific things in the later part of the session. There is a comfort zone here. Once you move further right, which means the relative humidity is getting really high, then it says too humid. To the left, it is too dry. Above the comfort zone, the temperature is high, the humidity is also slightly increasing. Then it says you need better air movement to keep yourself comfortable, which means you can get into a bigger comfort zone marked in the dotted line. Say with 1 meter per second air velocity, you can be comfortable within this particular boundary. As the temperatures fall down, you have with heat radiation, it can be sun, it can be artificial or mechanical you know heaters, where if you have this much radiation, say for example, 800 watts per meter square is available, then at this particular temperature, you can be comfortable. The comfort zone is drawn like this. Beyond this, it is unbearable. This is a very commonly referred, you know, fine tuned bioclimatic chart. Pro you know, this was proposed by Victor Alge. The comfort zone is here. <coughs> Beyond this particular point, shading is needed above this line. Here, you will need shading for the building. You can draw a lot of interesting inferences relating to your building, but primarily this is for outdoor. We will look at indoor in a little while. For outdoor, say this is a comfort zone. Beyond this, you need shading. You can have trees, you can have artificial, you know, shades. In this part, it becomes too dry. Here, it is too humid. Above this, you need wind. You know, good air movement is needed. There is a line here, a dark line here, which says this is a limit for light work. If you are involved in light sedentary activity, not very high metabolic rate, then this will be the limit beyond which you will probably get a heat stroke or you will be really uncomfortable. Then this particular dotted line says unbearable above this line. So, this is somewhere where you get health impacts, which gets really hot and really sultry above this particular line. On the other side, here you need shading, you know, the, you need sun below this line because the temperatures really drop. You need mild sun, you need, you know, really a good amount of radiation and furthermore as the temperatures drop down. This particular thing was prepared mainly in the context of outdoor environment. Applying a similar concept in the psychrometric chart, this you know, psychrometric chart is not highlighted, but you will see the temperatures here plus you have the relative humidity lines running here. And what is overlapped on this is a specific type of strategy, passive strategy. Some of them are active strategies to modify the comfort zone. This particular thing we will demonstrate more with the tool, but to take a quick look at it, as the temperatures fall down, this is in Fahrenheit. So, if the temperatures fall down, you need conventional heating passive and active solar heating, internal heat gains will help. This is actual comfort zone. For instance, if you take this as a comfort zone, the comfort zone can be increased in the hotter seasons. If you have some of these strategies, for example, this says high thermal mass with night ventilation. If your building has high thermal mass, then this particular comfort boundary gets increased all the way up to here. Even if the indoor, you know, even if the temperatures are as high as 
more than 100 degree Fahrenheit or close to 40 degrees, then you can still be comfortable or the person can be comfortable because the particular building he lives in, the room which he is present has high thermal mass and it is also night ventilated. After this point, it says you need conventional air conditioning. There are different strategies like this starting from you know simple heat gain to shading to thermal mass, evaporative cooling is there. Then you have this is dry heat, so you can have evaporative cooling. It may not work as you go up, you know, go up with higher sultriness or more vapor pressure, evaporative cooling will not work. Then you have high thermal mass and beyond certain boundary, say take a boundary of this range, beyond this you will need conventional air conditioning system or a conventional cooling system, mechanical system and beyond certain point like say this dotted line, you will need conventional heating system. You cannot afford to cool your building or heat your building through passive strategies beyond this particular boundary. Now I am going to introduce you to a tool which is called climate consultant. It is a freeware, you can download it online lot of weather data files are also available to work with it. I will demonstrate this particular tool starting from climate analysis up to deriving building related inferences based on just the weather data. I will be demonstrating you using this particular software. We will take a look at a tool which is called climate consultant which is a freeware as I said. This is really helpful for you know a quick climate analysis and to draw primary inferences or you know select strategies as a you know it is a first cut or a conceptual selection I would say. This will not give you the performance efficiency or how the strategies actually perform in the particular building, but it will give you a generic understanding of how effective these particular strategies actually are. So, this is climate consultant what you see on the screen when you open you know you can download it for free search for climate consultant the current version is version 6. It has undergone you know a lot of changes they are also keeping themselves update with the you know recent ASHRAE standards and uh, you know the comfort boundaries. So, once the, once you install this you will get you know when you open climate consultant it typically gets installed in your C drive not in the program just on the C drive not in my programs. When you open this you will get a screen like this it will ask you for the building type whether it is residential or small non residential building. So, I have chosen residential and I would prefer a metric system. It would ask you whether you have a climate data already you can just open it or you can download a weather data. This EPW is energy plus weather data energy plus weather format this weather data for almost you know 35 locations Indian locations is also available for free online. ISRAE that is Indian Society for Heating, Ventilation and you know Refrigeration and Air Conditioning Engineers. They have this particular repository from which you can download. This is the Indian version of ASHRAE, Indian Society for you know Heating, Refrigeration and Air Conditioning Engineers. So, from their site you can download and store it in your C drive. So, I am going to I have already downloaded some data. I am going to just click open existing EPW file. I have my weather data here. I have all this data sitting here. Let me choose one particular weather data. For now, I will choose say Jaisalmer, it is a hard and dry region. Once you choose a climate location, you get a climate summary on the screen like this. So, in which on the top you have the months, then you have monthly mean summary of different parameters. You would you know probably have heard about or even some of you would have learnt about Mahoney's tables. Mahoney's table is a primary thing that we talk about in terms of you know passive design strategy assessment. Actually this particular tool climate consultant works on the principles of Mahoney's table and finally it also suggests you strategies as similar to what you get in Mahoney's table. This is a computational version of probably you know I would say more closely a computational version of the Mahoney's table assessment that you do. Where you know in Mahoney's table physically you will be entering these parameters saying you know what is the um, radiation in terms of global horizontal direct diffuse radiations and stuff. Then you know you have your dry bulb temperature, dew point, rainfall, precipitation, relative humidity wind direction speed, you also have ground temperature. Some of these things you will be entering in Mahoney's table, but here it you know does the work for you. Then comes choosing a specific model, this is specifically for US and apart from this you have three things which we will look at today. The first thing is ASHRAE comfort model 55 standard 55, I have been talking about standard 55 for you know quite a few times in the lectures. ASHRAE standard 55 which is the current fundamental handbook of fundamentals model 
or you can go with the previous version of it up to 2005 or you can go with the adaptive comfort model. First let us take a look at the current handbook of fundamentals ASHRAE 55 model, then we will come to adaptive model. You keep clicking next, the next particular step is feeding in the data. Of course, you know you have a lot of things you can input or there are default values which are already there. It has two important things, one is say clothing value, it says winter clothing it is 1 claw value and summer it says 0.5 claw value. If you really want <coughs> two clothing insulations to be present, you can leave it like this or say if, if it is like you are calculating it for a office space or in residence you feel I do not need two different clothing insulation value, just put it as say 0.8 or you know 1 for both the seasons to avoid you know as you change this the comfort upper and lower limits changes. For example, the comfort lower versus comfort higher changes. Say, if I am changing it to say 1.5 claw value, you note that this particular value changes. In the screen, you will see this particular thing has changed. Now, I am leaving it at 0.8 and activity is a sedentary activity. It can be 1.1 or 1.2 and if you are interested, you can change the high thermal mass zone that is up to which the thermal mass is going to be effective high thermal mass with night flushing, some of these passive strategies, you can actually set the upper and lower boundary, but by default it calculates which is good enough. If you are really confident and you have the formulas with you, please go ahead and make the changes and see. As a part of this module, I am not you know covering any changes in these things, we can do, but you know with the time constraint, I am just going ahead with what is actually given this standard values. Next set of things you will get a climate summary. This actually is really helpful if you are a practicing person, you can take a snapshot of this, you can export it as JPEG images, you can show it to the client as a quick climate summary, this is really helpful, it is free. And number two, if you are a student for your climate assessment, you can actually use this. I am going to explain little bit of how to interpret and understand these numbers. The gray line presented here is a comfort boundary, the upper and lower limit of the boundary. This is like a statistical graph box and whisker plot typically. So, what you find here is a mean value and you have the upper and lower quartile ranges plus you have the you know percentage maximum and percentile minimum and then these dots are the outliers say you know for example, temperature goes up to 46 degree this is Jaisalmer, but this is once in a while if you take the mean maximum temperature it is around 44 degrees occurring in the month of June. You can also set the percentage of hours above as well as the percentage of hours below. The outlier, this is like a statistical thing, it is is it 99 percentile or is it 95 percentile, so that can be varied. Similarly, you will get summaries for global, horizontal, direct, normal and diffuse radiation and you will also see the summary of hourly dry bulb temperature, wet bulb mean temperature, you know this is a comfort zone again summer and winter, we have not defined two different comfort zones. So, you are getting a single a simple line. Then you get a detail of what is a solar radiation, you have direct normal radiation, global horizontal and total surface radiation. There are few interesting things in this, you can actually change the surface tilt, so that you can get something for different surfaces which means now the thing is 0, 0, 0.0 which means it is a horizontal surface. Say imagine I want it for a vertical surface, I can change it to 90, then I will get what is the direct and diffuse you know global horizontal radiation as well as direct, if you subtract you will get the diffuse radiation also. You will get the summary for 90 degree that is vertical. Once you say vertical which orientation it is, now it is 0 which means it is south. You can change it for example, if you want it in the north, you say 180 degrees, which means you get north 90 degrees. So, it can be varying and you can also adjust the ground reflectance, say this says 20 percent is for grass, you can increase or decrease this. You can get hourly average or you can get daily total, a simple thing, this graph will be really helpful for assessing the solar radiation on vertical and horizontal surfaces. In this weather data, illumination data is not available, never mind, sky coverage, then you will also get the wind velocity, we will look at a wind rose chart much in detail. This is about ground temperature, now we are not directly looking at it, I will come to this when we talk about energy. Summary of the data, this actually gives you 
the solar shading it can display a shading calculator you can actually you know adjust to what season you need shading specific shading design and calculation i'll cover in another module but this has a provision to adjust and you can actually move the shading mask you can also specify obstructions whether the obstructions are there in which orientation and in what height we will look at it sometime later in the module and this is about the gnomon gnomon is nothing but this is a you know sundial at what height you can adjust the height of the gnomon and this is your sun path and you have different types of summaries you can have a waterfall data you can have it for different parameters you can have it daily which is much closer or you can have monthly averages now we will come to the bioclimatic assessment or the building bioclimatic chart which we are actually interested in as a part of this module the previous things are of general interest to you you can use them you know as well for your projects or your design projects wherever it is relevant but this actually is a interesting part of the whole tool it helps you make design decisions for a specific climatic condition first before looking this is psychrometric chart before getting into this to take a look at what is there in this particular module it says how much percentage is comfortable indoor which this is not comfortable then it's asking what to plot is it comfort indoor is it dry bulb temperature or different things so first i'll take comfort indoor so i get a comfort zone i can plot hourly values which is what i have done you get more dots here the green ones you see each dot represents one hour you have 8760 hours that is 365 into 24 8760 hours in a year so each hour the temperature versus humidity is taken i have shown you similar graphs earlier in one of the other modules so there are each one represents a particular point a specific time instance in a day in a season or you can just plot monthly maximums and minimums then when you say hourly data you can have all hours that is 24 hour or you can take selected hours say you are working for an office building you can take the working hour say from 8 am to 6 pm so the number of dots are less the night time data is not plotted so if you read it closely here it is saying 4015 hours that is 8 am to 6 am daily all through the year whereas if you say all hours it says 8760 hours this is the first thing then you can either go for all months or you can specify specific you know selected months so if you if i want only for december you know january i am just getting 744 hours just the month of january in jaisalmer only that data points are plotted then you can fit the data now let us take a close look at what the graph itself means this is a psychrometric chart it has dry bulb temperature here it has the humidity ratio here then it has the you know uh, relative humidity lines starting from lower you know 10 percentage up to 100 percentage saturation line you have the wet bulb temperature of course this blue line this particular blue line this represents the comfort this you know blue shaded zone represents comfort actually this particular comfort zone is a factor of various aspects it did, you know it depends on the activity level it depends on the clothing insulation remember we had you know chosen an activity level of 1.2 we had chosen a clothing insulation of 0.8 if i were to change this to 1.5 clo value or 0.5 clo value the comfort zone would move to the left or right remember this is similar to the ashray comfort zone which i had mentioned in the previous module this particular line is the actual comfort zone and there are lot of other color lines you can relate this to this this is the actual comfort zone that i told you the next one is sun shading of windows which represents you know which is represented in this color it's a violet this is a sun shading of windows i'll explain this little in detail in a quick while there is a set of orange lines this is high thermal mass there is a line here which is also the number is also given number 3 and number 4 this particular line represents the effectiveness of high thermal mass if you are building envelope has the high thermal mass we will talk about the definitions of thermal mass and capacity in the following modules but if you are using high thermal mass which is you know which means it is a massive construction it is able to hold much of heat it has a high heat capacity then 
the effectiveness is shown within this boundary high thermal mass in this particular region will be effective beyond this it will not be effective high thermal mass along with night flushing that is night ventilated you open the windows during night say around 7 or 8 o'clock in the evening you open the windows you let the cold air come in it chills out the whole building that is where actually it is a coupling which happens between thermal mass it is a coupled thermal mass with ventilation where the ventilation actually the convective cooling helps you know cool down the thermal mass and daytime you keep the windows closed that is the hot airs are prevented the convective heat gain is prevented whereas convective heat losses are entertained in that way the effectiveness of thermal mass further increases all the way even up to 40 degrees the thermal mass is effective this is represented by zone number 4 then you have direct evaporative cooling of course evaporative cooling works during your dry season so this line particular line this represents the effectiveness of evaporative cooling direct evaporative cooling it can be by use of say water bodies around the buildings for instance this is a you know classic example which people give direct evaporative cooling is much effective in this particular zone that is the temperatures are higher and the relative humidity as well as humidity ratios typically the you know moisture content in the air is pretty less then the effectiveness of evaporative direct evaporative cooling is seen then you have two stage evaporative cooling which works slightly for higher moisture content slightly then you have natural ventilation cooling just you know you have a provision for good cross ventilation your building is well ventilated naturally then the you know effectiveness lies in this area for instance it is up to 30 degrees temperature and a relative humidity of around you know 40 percent or 50 percent relative humidity this particular zone natural ventilation is effective then you have more strategies like this further down you have passive direct direct solar heat gain say in a colder climate or in colder season rather this is comfort zone this is zone 10 or strategy 10 up to this point passive direct solar heat gain is very effective or efficient beyond this passive direct heat gain including higher thermal mass if your building has high thermal capacity and it also has passive direct solar heat gain say you have you know large glazing in the southern side and your building also has a high thermal mass then up to this point you can be comfortable that is the effectiveness stretches up to this particular point then you have humidification dehumidification apart from this you have cooling and dehumidification this is mechanical now let us look at what works and what does not work for a place like Jaisalmer as you see I have taken hourly all hours all months I have not you know demarcated any season or time of operation it is all over and the whole year data is right here there is a provision it will just show best of strategies the rest of it will be kept aside or you can see all the strategies as well together first let me cut all the strategies then I will go one by one first let us take say this is a comfort zone for the whole space the dots have turned red which means only 12 percent is comfortable that is 11.8 percent that is 1034 hours out of 8760 hours is comfortable which means around 12 percent of the time you can be within comfort zone sun shading is not shown here because this is a temperature versus humidity this actually covers your radiation component this is not added as a passive strategy directly this is your comfort zone the dots are in green the rest all are in red that means 80 percent 88 percent of the time in the year it is not comfortable first let us look at the first strategy it is high thermal mass just click on it you will get another zone added up you find 7 percent more that is that you know 635 hours more getting added to the comfort so in place of 12 percent the comfort has increased to 19 percent so if your building has high thermal mass you are using massive you know walls or you are introducing thermal mass trombe wall systems then you can improve your comfort and for around 19 percent of you know the time duration people can be comfortable if it is a 24 hour occupied building 
please make a note this is 24 hour occupied building which we are talking about all 24 hour people are there using the building go to the next strategy high thermal mass with night ventilation then this whole particular this whole zone is covered under comfort another 12 percent gets added up totally 24 percent of the duration you are comfortable so let us freeze on this particular strategy because naturally this is a subset of this so i am just keeping this into the loop for a quick moment if you just want natural ventilation you do not want to adapt thermal mass because for due to certain design reasons you just are providing proper cross ventilation then you can add about 4 percent to the comfort 12 plus 4 16 percent of the duration will be comfortable rest will be uncomfortable if you have fan forced ventilation slightly lesser internal fans i am opting for high thermal mass and night ventilation this is on the warmer side then on the colder side you have passive solar direct heat gain which is zone 10 primarily in the winter season it adds another 235 hours or close to 3 percent of the data or if you want passive solar direct heat gain with high thermal mass then already you have high thermal mass here which will also work efficiently in winter so you are adding another 918 hours which is around 10 percentage 10 and half percentage so on a whole 34 percent you have brought comfort for the people living in this particular building say house 34 percent of the year duration they will be comfortable that is around 2987 hours out of 8760 hours people are going to be comfortable in this particular building then what happens 66 percent is uncomfortable probably you can try dehumidification which will work in this it is not totally mechanical you also have desiccant dehumidifiers then if you use that you can increase comfort slightly more a little bit gets added up it is only 79 hours humidification really does not help here then rest of it you get to cooling and dehumidification is needed for around 52 percentage of the time you have around 14 percent uncomfortable hours so if i just say show best of strategies it is clubbing a few strategies and then making it zero percent uncomfortable by default so what are the strategies let us look at this it has suggested two stage evaporative cooling it has suggested natural ventilation it has also suggested internal heat gains passive direct solar heat gain dehumidification for some time it is just an optimum set of selection it does not mean the other strategies would not work an optimum selection so that the strategies are not replicated but still you will need for about 46 percentage of the time here you will need say around 4000 hours you will need air conditioning cooling and dehumidification typically an air conditioning system will be required this is for a 24 hour occupied building now if the building is only occupied for a selected duration so this is from 8 am to 6 pm this is a daytime occupied building take a relook at how the strategies are working there are only 4015 hours 4015 hours out of which typically 13 percentage is comfortable high thermal mass adds up around 15 percentage high thermal mass with night flushing adds 22 percentage if you look at if you compare what we got earlier we got you know around 12 14 percentage now we are getting around 22.3 percentage around 895 hours we are getting comfort it adds the total to 35 percentage comfortable and 65 percentage uncomfortable then any other typical strategies for example we can opt for dehumidification not very effective only 17 hours internal heat gain helps for about 11 percentage you can have passive direct gains not much effective this helps but it is overlapping with internal heat gains rest of the hours it would be cooling and dehumidification required the best of strategies again it is suggesting internal heat gains it is also suggesting dehumidification along with two stage evaporative cooling now on the contrary if the building is occupied from 6 you know say 9 pm say it is a night time occupied building up to 6 am in the morning so then 
what happens to the set of strategies which we were talking about? I am just cutting down all the strategies. It does not, you know, you do not need sun shading, so that has gone automatically. About 11 percentage is comfortable with high thermal mass, it just adds another 1 and a half percent or just 11 hours with simple thermal mass. Direct evaporative cooling does add a little bit, two stage evaporative cooling, natural ventilation, internal heat gains does a lot of help. Then you can opt for dehumidification, humidification of course does not help, cooling dehumidification for about 52 percent of the time. So, if you see the best of strategies, it is suggesting, you know see 25 percent effectiveness you are getting with passive direct solar heat gain and high thermal mass, because night times get really cold, internal heat gain helps by another 24 percent, two stage evaporative cooling and natural ventilation cooling is also beneficial marginally and about 42 percent of the time or 15, 38 hours you need cooling and dehumidification, mostly mechanical systems are required. So, this is particularly about the building bioclimatic chart, how you draw inference, this is the first step of it. And you know similarly, if you want only for a specific season, if not for all month, only for selected months, say you take the month of January and you want to estimate, these things becomes not useful. So, you do not need high thermal mass, you are on the colder side, if you are able to provide internal heat gains and you know passive solar direct heat gain along with high thermal mass you are going to be 100 percent comfortable in January. Say imagine you are wanting to check what happens in the month of May and June in this particular thing, this side of it does not help anyway. You can opt for high thermal mass, but still you have some sultry times. Let us see what happens in the daytime. It starts say around 8 o'clock in the morning, goes up to 6 p.m. in the evening. The data points are right here your high thermal mass with night flushing, it gives marginal improvement, direct evaporative cooling only slightly you know it is giving you some benefit. If you see the best of strategies, most part of the time around 94 percent of the time you need say 671 out of you know uh, 671 hours, 93 you know 630 out of 671 hours you need cooling and dehumidification. So, as to remain 100 percent comfortable. <coughs> In short, this particular you know method helps you choose which particular strategy, passive strategy is beneficial and to what extent, beyond which you need to go for active systems. It can be air conditioning system or it can be humidification or dehumidification system. Furthermore, you can change the criteria. From here actually we have crossed all this, we saw the temperature range, we saw sky coverage, sun charts, then we are now here in the psychrometric chart. If you want to change any criteria, for example, if you want to set a different criteria, you want to change the clothing insulation or you want to change the activity level, then you can do so. Say I am changing now quickly to 1.5 clothing insulation. 1.5 and I am saying recalculate, the comfort limits will change. I am increasing the activity level slightly just for a calculation sake. Now, you can straight go to psychrometric chart. The comfort zone, if you see the earlier comfort zone was somewhere here, it has moved left. Not much will be in comfort zone because you are wearing a you know highly insulative clothing along with a heavy physical activity. So, you need a colder condition to be more comfortable. If you change this, for example, if you are reducing the clothing insulation, then the activity level are also being reduced. Say recalculate, it will anyway do the calculations by itself, recalculation is automatic. Now, the comfort zone has gone pretty to the right, the zone has also shortly, you know, the size of the zone, the area of the spread has also come down. So, this is where the comfort zone change can be incorporated. I am just getting, setting it back to the default values and I am just changing this particular thing 0 0.8 and 0 0.8 which we looked at earlier. This is where our psychrometric chart currently is lying in. Now, you can also change 
the comfort model. We were looking at the ASHRAE 55, the current comfort model. You can also set the previous comfort model. It tells you what major changes or minor changes rather have happened between these two. You can also choose adaptive comfort model. Choose adaptive comfort model. I am going back to psychrometric chart. Now, interestingly what you will notice, there are no specific strategies which are, you cannot click on any strategy, nothing will work. It simply defines a boundary. It says that from 20 degrees up to 31 or 31 and a half degrees, there is comfort. Just this whole zone, you can be comfortable, but being comfortable in this zone might involve a variety of strategies. It can be personal adaptation or it can be opening, closing or improving the ventilation or it can be using a specific strategy of the building itself, but in this boundary you can be comfortable. So, if you are wanting to just check what is adaptive comfort limit, you can use this, but mind it you may not be able to draw any design conclusions because with a specific set of strategies a person would be comfortable here, that is what the adaptive model by itself means. Using this particular chart in the adaptive mode, you cannot really select a set of design criteria which will help you. Getting back to where we were, the next step, it will give you some handy information. It lists a set of strategies which will be really helpful. For example, if you click on it, you can get a sketch, you can copy paste it. This is really helpful. You can adapt in your building and recent additions in the last 3, 4, you know, 2 to 3 versions of climate consultant. It also links to this 2030 website where you have case studies, actual case studies which are there. So, imagine you are, a, you know, working for your design project in your college or you are wanting to show something to your client saying this particular strategy will work. You can click this, it will take it straight, you know, take you straight to the website where they have a repository of case studies and associated information. So, this is a really handy information apart from just copy pasting this by itself. Variety of strategies are there, how typically houses were built thermal mass, the use of it, use of vegetation. For each and everything, you will have the case study and links. So, this is about providing a radiant barrier. You can read this. Some of them are yet to be built. It says long narrow building floor plan. This is about the, you know, uh, perimeter to area and surface area to volume ratio, about ventilation. You can explore some of them, what type of roof system, what will work, what will not work. Further to this, it will take you to a summary and the windrows diagram. Here, this is a windrows diagram. We, you know, looked at a different form of windrows diagram earlier. Apart from this, this chart also has information about temperature, humidity and the number of hours. The temperature it has, you know, minimum, maximum and average. It shows the temperature range starting from less than 0, it can go up to greater than 38. This is a temperature summary. Then you have the relative humidity summary. Again, this tells you the color code tells you whether it is sultry or whether it is dry. Then this particular internal things, this gives you the wind speed and wind direction. Similar to the previous, you know, psychrometric by building bioclimatic assessment and psychrometric chart, we can also take selected hours or you can go for all hours. You can go for selected month, say for example, just for January. It will give you specific input for January alone or if you say all months I need, it will give you a summary. Apart from this, it can also run a quick animation. It will keep changing. For example, month to month, it changes say Jan, Feb, March. It goes on month to month, it does a simple animation or you can do a daily animation for a particular day. It keeps running. You can take snapshots which will be highly useful for you. And reading this particular windrows chart, it gives you minimum average and maximum and the duration, number of hours is shown here. How many number of hours, percentages from which direction it will show you. This is a very comprehensive chart, comprehensive form of, you know, this is not just the windrows alone, it also has temperature humidity information. So, as a summary climate chart, this will be really helpful for design projects. Apart from this, you can also create your own plot. You can set, you know, the right hand and left hand axis that is your, you know, sorry, your x and y axis 
the lower and left or right hand axis, then you can plot your images. Now, getting back to say you know if you want to save this you can save, but to compare and contrast you know uh, we looked at this particular psychrometric chart, we looked at a set of you know possible strategies that would work. We were looking at different strategies, passive heat gains, I will go back to all hours, all months, best set of strategies. This is already there, this is for the climate of Jaisalmer. If you just quickly want to compare uh, this, it asks you whether to save or not. Right now, I am not saving this. If you want to compare this particular weather with say a particular climate, a colder climate like Srinagar. <coughs> Similar way, I am not going to get through all these things. I am just selecting the comfort model and I am making sure these things, just for a comparison, I am making sure these things are set in the same way that we had earlier. Of course, you know colder climate, the clothing insulation will be little bit on the higher side. Getting to the psychrometric chart, <coughs> this is psychrometric chart, most part of the data is in the colder side. You know this area, for example, high thermal mass and night flushing is not very you know highly effective. Without this also you can go for, you have to do a cost benefit and see which is really beneficial. <coughs> but here internal heat gains as well as passive solar heat gain with high thermal mass is really helpful. Apart from this dehumidification can also be helpful for a 24 hour operational building. If for instance your building is only operational in the night time 8 pm to about 6 in the morning, most of these strategies becomes redundant, they are not useful. Mostly the strategy is on your left hand side of the psychrometric chart including natural ventilation just for about 9 hours. Most part of the thing you get from passive solar heat gain through high thermal mass. If you compare, this is exactly what vernacular buildings were actually doing. They had high thermal mass and they were building larger openings and they were improving heat gains in the southern side. Internal gains can also be helpful. Look at the best of strategies. It just says you can, if needed, you can have high thermal mass. This can be avoided. Internal heat gains are helpful or you can just have passive direct solar heat gain, it will be 100 percent comfortable. So, this is all about climate consultant software tool. In this session, we looked at two important things. One is the basics of bioclimatic assessment. Then we looked at the tool climate consultant where we had certain working examples using which we demonstrated for different climates what are the major passive strategies and how they actually work with. Thank you.